All right, class, who can tell me what a soap cutting box, a popsicle stick, a chemistry spatula, and a vegetable peeler have in common? A couple of weeks ago, I polled my followers over on Instagram and asked them what they used to bevel their soaps. These four tools, along with fingernails, came up as tools that they used to bevel them, so I figured why not give it a go. We're using this bar of soap here today. This is a failed attempt at a nesting drop, so it's the perfect option for testing beveling tools. I'm gonna leave this first bar here as the control in our little experiment, meaning we haven't done anything to this soap, so we're gonna compare all of the other soaps to it. Here's our second bar before we start beveling, and for our first tool, we're going to use the vegetable peeler. This is the tool that I use about 90% of the time because it's very quick, very easy, not dangerous at all, and it gives consistent results once you know the hardness of your soap and how firm you should press and how quickly you should move it across the bar. When I have a textured top, I don't bevel the top edge, but in this case it's not super textured, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that so you can check it out. And that is the vegetable peeler, my friends. Let's move on to the next tool. For our second tool today, we're gonna to be using a popsicle stick. This was mentioned to me uh, in response to my story question by Mr. Herx Homemade. You should go check him out. He's awesome, he's got a killer beard and he makes some beautiful soaps. He's also working on candles now. Anyway, he told me this popsicle stick thing was the only way that he bevels his bars. So I definitely wanted to give it a go and I'm not hating this. It, it definitely takes the edge off of the bar. It doesn't remove very much. And I turned it over in my hands a couple of times off camera. It didn't feel rough either. It didn't feel kind of offensively sharp, you know? I did notice that it was kind of hard to get like a clean edge. So maybe it just takes more practice, but I do like how it takes the edge off without removing so much soap. All right, let's move on to the next one. Next, we've got my soap cutting box. Now this box bevels, it planes, and it cuts soap. So it's not a unitasker. It's got this little blade right here, and it sticks up on the edge right here, and then there's this little notch that you put the corner of the soap into and then slide it, and it gets cut, creating a beveled edge. The only downside to this one I think, is that it, it does bevel quite a bit off of the bar, so you're removing quite a bit. The upside is, it looks really cool. I like how kind of professional it looks. So you can see here how much it bevels off, it's a big chunk, and here's the edge. It looks really clean and sharp, and then once you get all four edges done, it looks really cool. So sometimes I like to do this for my bars when I'm cutting them out of a slab because usually I have a design on one of the big flat sides rather than on the top. And I, what I mean by design isn't necessarily swirl like a drop swirl or a, an in the pot swirl, but if I'm doing anything special on the top of the soap as like an art piece kind of thing, I want it to be showcased. And this beveling technique kind of looks like a frame to me. So I use it in those applications. In this case, I think it looks pretty cool too. Comment down below with what you think. All right, so for our third tool, we have with us a metal chemistry spatula. So this one has two sides. It's got a flat end and then a spoon shaped end. And this is used in chemistry labs to scoop things out of containers, probably even used in like pharmaceutical labs as well. The scoop is really long and it doesn't get a lot out of the container, so you're able to measure pretty precisely without having to cast away any of your material for waste to reduce any uh, cross-contamination. So I'm just using this here with the flat end, that's what she said, and kind of scraping it along the sides. And it's doing an all right job. It's not super easy to get it very even and straight. There is some jumpiness to it, and I'm having a hard time keeping the soap in frame because I'm having a hard time using it. I'm sure that it's about learning to use it, and maybe this is a tool that he's been using in life for a really long time, and so he feels very familiar with it. But it felt, um, I don't know, maybe even dangerous because I was using this side that had the sharp corners and I was afraid I was gonna hit myself. Now, just for fun, let's go ahead and use the spoon side too. I don't know what this is gonna do, but we can at least give it a try. 
What I found from using this spoon side was that it was really difficult to get a clean and even bevel down the side of the soap. I tried holding it a couple different ways, maybe scraping it across rather than scooting it towards my thumb, and then I got these divots, so I wasn't able to very evenly do anything. This is not going to be my go-to, but it was fun to try. And for my final trick today, I'm going to use my hand. More specifically, my nails. Now, this is something that when I first started making soap, I remember watching a video with Katie Carson from Royalty Soaps, and she said, I think it was in the Royal Creative Academy video, she was talking about beveling, and she said you could even use your fingernail if you wanted to bevel the soaps that way. So, I thought I'd give it a go. It makes me really uncomfortable scraping this with my nail and then having soap go underneath my nails because I'm one of those people that doesn't like it when there's any dirt under there. But I gotta admit, it does a good job. You have a lot of control because you're using your thumb. You are both the tool and the sensor that picks up any variation in pressure or hardness. So you're able to calibrate yourself in real time. Whereas while you're using a tool, you're hoping that everything goes well and that you're in full control of this tool. So I can see why somebody would want to do this, but if I'm honest, it kind of grosses me out. Now that we've tested all of our tools, I would love to hear from you, the audience, about what you liked the most. My favorite from this bunch was the one that I used the box beveler on. And I know that this is a little bit more of a luxury tool, but I do think it gives it a really cool look. So I'm gonna finish up this entire batch by beveling the edges with that box. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that this video was helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you use a beveling tool that I did not talk about today because I would be happy to try it out. I know there are some really cool ones out there on Etsy that are 3D printed and that give really neat profiles and I would love to try something like that. So I'm just waiting for you to comment with something bananas that I get to go spend my money on. If you liked this video, please do like and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. And thank you so much for joining me again. I'll talk to you guys next time. Until then, be well.